Now since everyone's going to say, why don't you ever do a pull in the truck, I guess we'll do one today. Try and roll into first, easy. Howdy and welcome to the channel today. I'm Luke Thunderhead 29 here on YouTube. Now in this video today we're going to look at something that's a very touchy subject for a lot of folks. Ported versus manifold vacuum and some of the methodology behind um, I guess setting up your ignition timing with both of those items. So I run a little Facebook page where um, we do a lot of how-to and tech questions and the biggest thing that I see that's misunderstood on these old school engines is ignition timing. Now, and a lot of folks spend a lot of time putting all these extra parts, you know, high lift cams, they spend a lot of money to make a performance engine and then they just take all that and throw that out the window because their ignition timing is not set up, you know, in any way, shape or form correct. And they're just leaving tons and tons of power on the table. So today we're just gonna touch on this ported versus manifold vacuum piece. And I guess let's we'll jump right in, so. Put on your big boy pants today, we're probably gonna hurt some feelings. All right, so to fully grasp what I'm trying to tell you today, you need to have a very basic understanding of what folks are referring to when they say ported or manifold vacuum. And what this correlates to is the vacuum port on the carburetor that is then hooked to the vacuum advance canister on your distributor. Now, here for example, we have a HEI style uh, Protronics Igniter 3 unit that is a pretty respectable distributor. And then we have a vacuum pump for bleeding brakes hooked to it to simulate our um, vacuum signal from our engine. So the only difference between ported and manifold vacuum is it idle, you're not adding any ignition timing um, if you're on your ported port. Now your manifold vacuum port is exactly what it says it is. It's full manifold vacuum. So. I got the engine idling here in the old F100. This gauge here is hooked to full manifold vacuum. You can see that it responds to any blip of the throttle. Now this port down here is ported vacuum. And if you have your carburetor set up correctly, you should not see any vacuum on this port. And so, you know, I talk a lot about transfer slots and everything, and we won't get into that today, but I have a little high idle switch here just to demonstrate. So as you can see, if we just slightly open up our throttle, we start to have vacuum on our port. Now, if we open our throttle a little bit more, you'll see that ported vacuum and manifold vacuum are exactly the same. And again, I'm gonna shut this off and you can watch our vacuum here. You see how that drops to zero. And again, this is teed into our ported port. All right, I can really accentuate this pretty well on the interstate here. So as I work the throttle back and forth, see my foot? Our vacuum signal is gonna change. If I completely let off, manifold goes high, ported goes to zero. So when you're into the throttle, again, they're exactly the same. Again, the only difference between ported and manifold vacuum is that one does not add ignition timing at idle and you can just see by the vacuum signal they're exactly the same unless you let off the throttle other than that they're doing the exact same thing so um vacuum advance only adds ignition timing when you're at a high enough vacuum scenario so we're going to test out here you can actually see the mechanism move on this pertronics unit when we get to a certain vacuum. So, let's see here, because I'm not sure. So it looks like about eight inches here, it starts to move, and we'll see when it gets to full advance. Uh, somewhere down around 12 um, inches of vacuum there, she is at full advance, and as we go up, we're not adding anything else. So let's drop her back down again. You can see the lever arm move. It looks like about five, six or so, we're starting to add timing. So 
the purpose of vacuum advance is to add ignition timing when you're at high vacuum scenarios. When are you in these scenarios? So jumping under the hood here, you're in these scenarios when you're cruising around the road. So this brings us to the question of why we need more timing when we're cruising. When we have high manifold vacuum, we don't have a lot of throttle input, and it's really conceptually pretty simple here. Basically, when you don't have a lot of throttle input, you're not volumetrically filling your cylinder quite as much, and so that less dense fuel and air charge has a lot longer burn time. And in order to burn that at the proper point in the stroke, where we're getting the most effective use of our cylinder stroke, we have to fire that mixture a little bit sooner so that the flame propagation is at the right time. So I know that's a little confusing. We're gonna demonstrate that with a compression tester. So I've already spun the engine over with our throttle closed here. I'll get another spin just so you can see. As you can see, as you can see there, we're about at 120 PSI on our cylinder one. All right, so the only thing we've done here is we've wired our throttle completely open there. And this would be a very low vacuum scenario with a high throttle input. And we'll watch as I roll the engine over. Remember, it was at 120 before, and it's going to increase. All right, so she went from 120 to about 140. And this is just, you know, spinning the engine over very slowly. So obviously you can see here with more throttle input, you have more cylinder pressure. And this is obviously much more accentuated when you're at a running RPM. But again, as you saw earlier in the video, when you step into the throttle and manifold vacuum drops out like the scenario you would have here, you also lose your vacuum advance entirely. There's no vacuum to open that diaphragm. And so again, you're just on your mechanical timing. All right, so with all that in mind, that brings us to our question of ported versus manifold vacuum finally. Now remember, this is only adding ignition timing when you're at light throttle scenarios, as you've seen throughout the video, and the only difference between ported and manifold itself is that manifold adds timing at idle while ported does not, if you have your carburetor set up right and not too much throttle exposure. So which one should you use? Where should you hook your vacuum line for your vacuum advance canister onto your carburetor, ported or manifold? And to clear up one more misconception about all this, a lot of folks will move their vacuum line from ported to manifold, manifold to ported, and say, well, it runs better either way. No, if you go to ported, you have to realize for manifold, you took ignition timing and took it away until you have enough throttle input. So what you have to do is advance your initial mechanical timing. So I'm gonna tell you the way I set up most street engines, and then you can make whatever assessment you wanna make, and ultimately it's your choice what you choose to use. Now, personally, I've found that most all street engines that have mild cams or stock cams work the best on ported vacuum. They don't require a whole lot of ignition timing at idle because the dynamics of the camshaft is just making really good cylinder pressures at idle versus a high lift cam with a lot of overlap doesn't have as much cylinder pressure at idle and requires more initial advance. So if you try and run manifold vacuum on a mild cam or stock style engine, what you're gonna have happen is you'll have so much ignition timing being added in from that vacuum advanced canister. In order for your carburetor to idle at the, you know, an ideal RPM, you have to close your throttle way too much on your carburetor, or you need to have way too little initial mechanical advance. And when you step on the throttle hard and you take that timing and throw it out the window, you know, you're just, your engine responds very lazily off the line because now you don't have enough ignition timing. So with ported, you can mitigate a lot of those issues. Now, of course, there is a dynamic relationship between your ignition timing and the functionality of your carburetor at idle. So again, remember ported, we need to add a little bit more initial mechanical timing. What you're looking for on your carburetor settings is a throttle position in between the point of where your transfer slots are exposed. So you have a little bit of vacuum signal on those 
but not so far that you get to the point where if you see this little in the center of the screen, that is actually your ported port for your vacuum advance. If you get too much throttle exposure and you're seeing vacuum on that ported idle, then you have too much throttle exposure and you need to increase your initial mechanical timing. Now, if you go too far, like I said, which most folks can easily do with full manifold vacuum, you'll see that now no transfer slots are exposed. And the purpose of those transfer slots in conjunction with your accelerator pump is to handle the transition from idle to your main jet circuit. So they work a lot better if they have a little bit of vacuum signal because fuel is already flowing. And then when you hit the throttle, you know it just continues to draw more from that circuit. If you have no exposure at idle, um, basically you have a flat spot between the time it takes from fuel to get going on that circuit before it gets to the engine. So, so that's kind of the form and function of how all this works. And a Holly and Edelbrock are actually exactly the same in this regard. Um, the ported port obviously on Edelbrock being up here because it's above the throttle blades in the same way it also has transfer slots. So you can set everything up with the same mentality between the both carburetor styles. There's really no difference. Now I also want to make it clear that ported vacuum is not the end all be all. There's compromises you have to make with ported vacuum also. You know, even though you've advanced your initial mechanical timing, um, relatively to an idle, your advance is still a little late and it's going to favor a richer idle mixture. So, you know, again, there's compromises you have to make on both sides. I'm not really in love with either of them, but for street engines, I've seen that ported vacuum works really well. Now, I'm really not a huge fan of all these compromises you have to make with these old school engines with ignition timing that are just inherent in the overall design of a distributor. You know, the limitations that are associated with uh, weights and springs and stop bushings and vacuum advance and everything. It's pretty good, but it's not completely perfect. And um, I bumped into a guy about four weeks ago that shared the same opinion. And he told me he was so frustrated with it, he went out and just designed his own distributor. So Ted with Progression Ignition, it's a company that just got started. And basically you take all of those limitations that are inherent in the design of an old school distributor and throw it right out the window. There's just so much capability in this little package. And before you run out and pay all the money for an MSD distributor, I strongly encourage you to check out his website. And we'll roll clips on a few of his videos um, that overview his product, but it's just the coolest thing that I've seen since the advent of the T5 swap and these old Fords. So with that, that'll do it for me today, guys. We'll catch you later.